So this episode All is brought right. to you by Atlas Ghost Lady. Do you know what Atlas is, Ghost Lady? No way. Please tell me. If you're a creator, you're going to love this, man. If you're looking for music for your next video, then you need to check out Artlist. It's a royalty-free music licensing platform. Uh, whether it's for mm. video, film, and YouTube, this is just for you. So if you're a YouTuber, or when you decide to start your channel, Ghost Lady, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to use some music that you don't have to pay for, you can get all that mm-hmm. music on this website, just like that. Oh, nice. With a yearly subscription, you get full access to the music library with unlimited downloads and one simple license that covers everything, even commercial Mm. projects. That's what makes Artlist the music licensing platform for all creators. Start today and find the perfect song for your next video. But wait, Ghost Lady, there is more. Whoa, more? (laughs) If you use my link below, you'll get two extra months for free on your subscription. And what's the link below? That they well, can use. It is on my uh, the the uh, description thing. There'll be a link yeah. there. If you use that link, you'll get two extra months for free on your subscription. That is Artlist made for creators. From the moment this ad started, this many videos have been uploaded to YouTube. You want to stand out? Then you need the best music for your videos. Get unlimited access to Artlist's complete music catalog with amazing new music added daily that's pre-checked for monetization. It doesn't matter what kind of creator you are or how big your channel is. With Artlist, you're free to create. Start now and stand out. Henda, very mean welcome to another episode of Podcast and Chill, the only podcast that matters. Yes, yes. this is number one podcast. And uh, please welcome my special guest this evening. Uh, Sipo says, Muchi matters. Muchi for the kids. Which alias should I use, bro? It's just Muchi. <laughs> This guy's got so many ghost lady. Yeah. <laughs> ghost no, lady. You know, I was just saying, I'm like, I've seen that Sipo is also getting into podcasting. How is it going? Well, I haven't technically started my podcast yet. Uh, I've, had, I've had my YouTube channel now for about is it almost six months now. Yeah, almost six months. And part of like the shows that I'm going to be having on there will include like a podcast in time. I think I did one episode because mm-hmm. I do like a weekly rap episode. The one episode that I shot was outside of the normal, uh, 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 like in the apartment that I shoot. And I shot it at the office with like a podcast mic. I was just like testing out a new vibe, if I can say that, leading up to what will become like a, like mm-hmm. a, a bi-weekly podcast that I'll kind of have with guests as well on my, uh, as one of the new shows on my channel. And then how's lockdown been treating you? Who have you been quarantining with? Ah, uh, fuck this shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no way, done. <laughs> we were just made to suffer. We were just suffering every day. Suffering. Hey, are you suffering alone? Are you alone there? Oh, yeah, 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 man. I mean, uh, I'm a single man now. <laughs> you lie. <laughs> not, a, not a change since you last spoke, man. No, <laughs> you do. The last time we spoke, no, you talked about how much you love your woman. Boy, I think you can put that in the description. People say it's girlfriend. <laughs> oh shit, you guys broke up, bro. Uh, unfortunately, we broke up, bro. Yeah, what happened? Like that oh, what, happened? what happened? It just didn't work out, eh? But I mean, we're cool. See, but this you. It didn't work out. You were planning on getting married, bro. <laughs> How? I don't think I said those words. <laughs> but no, at the time, I mean, it, it was going really well, but we just. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it just didn't work out, bro. Okay, but who uh, fucked I'm, up? I'm Did, you break fuck up? Down. Did you fuck up or she fucked up? I didn't fuck up. We just weren't on the same page anymore, if I can say that. No yeah. one, it wasn't something weird like cheating or... Uh, no one cheated. <laughs> I know that's the famous thing to do. <laughs> that's the hot thing to do. <laughs> hey, Ghost Lady, don't you just hate it when celebs tell you that? Like, oh, no, we're just not on the same page, hey? Yeah, bro, you yeah, know, we just like just to the part, you know. <laughs> She's on Jupiter, I'm on Mars. <laughs> Why weren't you able to see that all, all this time before you came to that decision? Uh, what is this now? I'm probably a back in my relationship. <laughs> you know what oh, I think? I to know. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not going to devolve. Like I said, we're cool. But I mean, so, so, whatever happened between us, 
the, the, the details. I'm giving you guys a condensed version, which is that we literally just weren't on the same page anymore. And we just decided to be a pod. I think you got too famous for her. Too famous? Mm. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> or too broke. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, listen, man. I don't know where do you guys want to start, man. Do you guys want to start with the AKA Caesar thing? Do you like, I know? I know you woke up late this afternoon. Uh, what did you think when you first saw the Caesar and AKA thing? Um, I mean, I expected it. I don't think Caesar has ever been uh, has ever had anyone come at him and then he like backed down or ignored it. That guy has time on his hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let me read some of the tweets for you, actually. AK said, riding tractors and calling people ninjas while wearing bootleg cut jeans. I am dead. <laughs> and ninjas, like, who still talks like that? Uh, Caesar says, I'll be very direct with you, son. Mina, I'll fuck you up for free. No need to sign up contracts. Then I'll front you money for legal fees after that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's always been love, Shots but fire. I mean, so if he wants to act froggy, he can leap right now. He must go play around. His peers not here. Ninjas get too excited for promo sometimes. Let me help him get some coins. Hashtag KTV. He's just mad because he invited me to his show and I said no. And um, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, uh, history shows that Caesar has been on our show. That's why we're number one podcast in the country. I'm just saying. Yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think you uh, interviewed me before Caesar. Or the other way around. Who did you interview first? I do. really made you number one podcast in the country. I want to take credit. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Uh, he carries on to say, I don't even know what this means, but I will tell you this. I'm not the one getting my bills settled by girls. Damn. Is that, a, is, is that a fact? Is that true? <laughs> you Actually, that's what I was going to ask. Like, is the is it is it was just aka is he really broke? Broke like the fact that it's Agana Mali hashtag. I don't think aka is anywhere near broke. I think the the, 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 the chat is just aka, I guess, should be way more well off than he is. I think is the the sentiment that Caesar had put out on that previous tweet that I told you about from when the Reebok news came out. Just saying that because aka is definitely not broke, you know. Uh, prior to lockdown, you know, he's been a consistent performing artist for maybe a, almost a decade now or something like that. And that show money is the, is the real money, right? So as long as you stay on stage, you never really, <laughs> you never really uh, run out of cash. But I think all the deals that AKA has had, there was this, there was his company that fell through, his boy apparently who took money from him, all these funny things. Uh, he cried about his own label, then he went back. So there's like a track record of like bad business decisions where you're thinking someone like AKA uh, in his position uh, would, have, would have known better, I guess. You know where I think this beef started? If you check during the week, there was a tweet that Mini Lamini posted, right? And she was basically talking about how uh, people in this industry aren't making money and this, this virus has brought that to light and that's why people yeah. die broke and shit like that. And then Cizwe, replied and he said no there is a lot of money to be making entertainment it's just that people ninjas leave uh beyond the yeah. means. you know what i mean means right. yeah. yeah yeah and i think that's what pissed off aka because in as much as he's saying he's been gigging and he's got all these deals but we don't know if he's living beyond his means mm-hmm. i think the thing about it is that um yeah I mean, rappers are famous for, no, for, for, for living um, uh, <laughs> <Beyond their own. laughs> across the world. They, it, 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 it is the Achilles heel. You see some shiny ass diamonds and you want to just, you just want to stunt a nigga. It's the rapper way. Yeah. It's part of the rap culture, isn't it? You got to have a flashy car, you got to have a big house, you got to pop champagne. And if you're in that life, you can get very easily sidetracked. Now, mm. the thing of people making money is true because um, people do make a lot of money, especially in the last like five, six years, you can say, hip-hop artists have really been, you know, in their bag. They've been getting plenty of endorsements. We know these artists charge, uh, like you would know, they charge a lot of money to get on stage. Their mm-hmm. booking fees are through the roof. So their, their performance money is very important to them. So let's put, it, let's put a picture like this. Let's say somebody like AKA, uh, if, he, if he's on his touring, you know, uh, busy performing uh, schedule, and he's doing shows every weekend, every month. 
And let's just say theoretically that AKA can clock, let's just put a number out there and say, let's say it's 300,000 Rand a month. Yeah? Let's say he does all these X amount of gigs and he makes 300,000 a month. You start to get comfortable with 300,000 Rand a month, right? As any rapper or even as a DJ, if that's the money you're making before lockdown, if we can make that example. So you don't see something like Corona coming, right? As much as artists don't see that, don't pop forever, because that's the real chat. You won't pop forever, so save your money. So in terms of Corona, that's the last thing you see coming. Maybe at the end of your, like, your reign and not being so hot anymore, you might smell coming as the booking starts to slow up, like, hey, maybe I should start saving a little bit. But Corona, you'd never smell coming. You would not know that you wake up tomorrow and there's like, no more money. No money coming in, zero rand you're earning from your performance money. The hundreds and thousands you used to make any month, now you make zero. And you must find another way of making money. But you were living a 300 rand lifestyle, 300,000 rand lifestyle. Do so you see where the problem comes in where it comes to it like a grinding halt versus like a gradual slow process where money becomes less and less and you have to start getting a little bit smarter. That's where a lot of artists have found themselves. You get comfortable because you're just thinking, I, I make so much money every month. No one can tell me anything. And then Corona comes and it's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> you know, while like going into the third month of Oaks losing so much money. So think of guys who at this stage would have made maybe up to a million rand. They missed that money, bro. <laughs> Yeah. For me, in all of it, I feel like AK is really broke. I always say there's a little bit of truth whenever someone makes such statements. Yeah, he's just AK is definitely not broke, but I think the the sentiment is just artists just aren't being smart with their money. It's not even an AKA thing. Mm-hmm. What many are saying, which says people are being exposed, people are being spo- exposed for not being smart with their cash. Guys yeah, because I think maybe he's actually money. stuck in bad contracts. So maybe that's, you know, him coming out. Maybe there's just a few other little bad contracts, that like even some things that you mentioned. So, yeah. But one thing you guys yeah, must remember just, about this industry is that the people that look like have money are the ones that don't. The people that have yeah. money are the ones that are wearing bootlegs. <laughs> <laughs> Driving tractors. <laughs> Driving tractors. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's why I can really, oh, s- somewhere or another, I'm like, mm, AKA, he's struggling somewhere. Uh, mm. well, I would say, see, 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 he's got that age. I mean, my, my nigga has horse money. You know how much a horse costs? <laughs> you know, not to, not to play with that guy. If you tell a rapper how much a horse costs, they'll be like, yeah, dick, 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 dick. and we're not talking about a female <laughs> dog here. <laughs> oh, oh boy. What is that? This is not a, a husky. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a husky, this thing. When you buy a husky, you're like, eh, 6K. <laughs> yeah, no, but, yeah. but, but, but honestly, what I think is happening, I just think this is all promo. Like him saying he's broke, him saying going, uh, having a tour with Caesar, it's all promo for his app because, you know, he's got to keep top of mind and he's got to keep, talk, uh, keep people talking about him so that people can yeah, download his okay. app. That there's no reason why AK but, needs to fight with Caesar. We all know they love each other. There's absolutely no reason, apart from promo. I don't know. The, the, the Reebok thing, my thing about it is like, I don't want to say, that, you know, like, like that's an L that you kind of want to keep t- close to your chest. <laughs> mm. Personally, that's what I feel like. I feel like that's an L that you want to keep close to your You don't want to say that you made an entire shoe with a Reebok and that for the shoe and the sale and, no and the entire process, it was zero money. Mm. <laughs> Instead, you had signed a deal prior, an ambassador, a monthly ambassadorship deal. And in that deal, there was a sneaker, but for the sneaker, there was no new contract. You just made a shoe with these guys, they put your name on it, and you got zero rand. It's like, that's not a great deal, man. And it's I understand the story behind it. He said he thought he was breaking down boundaries, but he didn't say that at the beginning. Remember when you were dropping the shoe, you're saying, uh, I'm the guy who's paving way for everybody. I'm, you know, when I do deals, my name is on it. <laughs> so the energy he had then versus, oh, poor me, didn't give me this money. <laughs> listen, He's paid the way broke thing. guys. You know, so it's like, it's a weird thing, Hora. But I understand how about this time, I'm playing the sympathy card as well, mm. a little bit. And I'm so just, these are tricky times. No one knows how this, no one knows how this is going to last. So coming out and saying, I had a bad deal, I made a bad financial decision, and then dropping something that says, I need your financial support for this, is kind of like in line. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. You guys, I made, I made a bad financial decision, but I've got an app that I kind of need you to subscribe to that's going to make me money. So let's, 
<laughs> I'm just waiting for the day uh, these people can do promos without being controversial for the sake of being controversial. It's getting controversial. tiring now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like me waking up tomorrow it's and saying I'm gay emotive. just because I want the podcast to be number one. Well, we are, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, are, are you gunning for the LCC TV now? <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a character thing, you know, when something is just a part of who you are, when you're a bit of a volatile person, you know, if someone jabs, you like to would you, would you Would you do like this, Sipo? Would you do something crazy or controversial for the sake of just pushing your YouTube channel? Just. Hmm. No, I wouldn't. You know, <laughs> I think about it. Bro, how like, would you take would a go? picture with Larry? Oh, Oh, we'll get we we'll get into the meat and the bones now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we're, trying figure, we're trying to figure out how you're going to introduce that dumbass. <laughs> just been fighting. <laughs> well, since we're there, <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying, would you do that? Uh, I, I've asked myself what I would do in order to push promo. Because basically, I mean, being a YouTuber, being a content creator. The whole point of it is jumping on latest topics. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, uh, so there's a difference between like what you do. You know what I'm saying? You're going to speak about relevant things that are happening and talk to relevant people because that works for you. It works for them. And it's just what everyone is talking about right now. You know, and sometimes you might go dig up an old trending topic. That's fine. Or an old person if it's about interviews. But it's about being relevant, right? Or creating a conversation. So you want, if nobody's tuning in, then you're like, I'm doing something wrong. I might not be talking to the right people or sort of speaking about the right things. So I'm already in a position where I jump onto things that are popping. So I don't know what, how, far, how further I would go to promo it in like dropping a bomb and saying, okay, now this, okay, this, this week I'm gonna, it's a tell all time. So what I'm gonna do is make a thread about intimate details of my breakup, for example, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so that I can, I can draw people to, to, to watch something or intimate details of the microwave boys breakup, you know, mm-hmm. the behind the scenes, what you don't know. You know, just mm. to gain text and then bring what up don't we know? literally happened like over a year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think you pretty much know everything. Shit went south and everybody went their separate ways. Shit, do you miss it though? Uh I do funny enough, just uh just now, like literally just before you called me at six thirty, somebody had tagged me on an old video and it's a video that we had okay with Sabi and it just made me laugh. Uh the interaction on it. And about a month ago, or maybe some time ago, somebody had brought up the Ricky Rick episode, which for me was like my favorite episode. We just had so much fun with Ricky on that episode. It was one of, it was one of the last episodes of My Great Boys as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the last 10, somewhere in the last 10 episodes we had Ricky. And that was just like my favorite one. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I do, I, I do miss the setup. Uh, I do miss the fun that we used to have, obviously. And uh, what the show did itself, just in terms of the YouTube community. It was, uh, it was an important show. So, I mean, and I guess it will just live on, you know? It kind of erase the past or, uh, or rewrite it. <laughs> it just is what it is. The impact will stay there. The show, for anybody who is ever interested, can go watch it. But in terms of, do I miss the show itself? Yeah, I do. Sometimes I miss it. Uh, Gosling, do you remember when you... Fr- thinking- oh, sorry, sorry. You were saying, Gosling? Okay. Re- no, no, I was just going to ask him. Um, Sipo, was it easier doing, uh, we're working with the guys or is it easier working alone now? Uh, it's definitely easier working alone. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely easier working alone because, I mean, Macquarie Boys was three of us, but it needed about four people to be uh, have the same schedule every single week. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm. So as time went on, people became busier with their own personal stuff. It was one of those things that were, uh, oh, we can't shoot this week because somebody's not there. We can't shoot this week because somebody has another gig. We can't do mm. this those, those small things started to, like, interfere with our shooting schedule. The more the shot... The more the show grew, the more individually we grew as well. You know what I'm saying? Okay. People's priorities are different. And people have different things that they need to like uh, pay attention to every single week, if I can say that. So um, definitely shooting by myself or doing stuff by myself is easier because I can work at my own time at any given time. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to gather anybody's energy. I shoot everything myself. I edit everything myself. I don't need any help at all from anybody unless I want help or extra help from like I still work with Menzi, so he still edits certain things on my stuff, especially if I work with a brand. You know, he, he's got that extra edit touch. Because I'm not an actual editor, but like editing a YouTube video is not like rocket science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, the impact, I was, oh, yeah. I was about to ask Ghost Lady, like, do you remember the first time you saw or heard about Mark, Microwave Boys, Ghost Lady? Yeah, when I stumbled upon them on um, YouTube, yeah, and I just enjoyed it, you know, so I caught some few, like, I loved the vibe, the guys, what the guys had, but obviously, priorities and people's mindsets changed and, you know, what people were doing behind it. Because for me, I think, like, yes, yeah. you guys changed the culture. Like, it had such an impact, what you guys were doing at the time. I mean, I think, like, everybody knew about Microwave Boys. Would I be correct in mm. saying that? Now, the impact, yeah. and you know what? When I, was, when I was in it, I didn't feel it as much at the time. You know what I mean? When I was shooting Microwave Boys every single week, putting the episodes up. Because when I started it, when we started it, sorry, it wasn't, I wasn't a YouTuber by like nature. You know what I'm saying? And YouTube was still like, if we started the show now, it would have been four years ago now? Yeah. It would have been four years. If it was still going on now, this would have been the fourth year. Wow. Um, so uh, four years ago. So at that time, YouTube had just a small amount of like people in South Africa to pick up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the show did what it did for the culture. And uh, it was great to see South African content there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was yeah, just so the, the-, the show. And the nature of the show as well, of what it was doing. Because at the time where the internet as well locally was becoming more robust, and we started having these conversations, you know, trending topics on Twitter were a big thing, mm. a big part of popular culture and news. So the show came at the right time to kind of jump on that wave when nobody else was doing it at the time. Like speaking about what's happening in that type of manner. And also, I guess we were unrestricted, so it didn't sound mm. like we were scripted and we should learn and were, people could come to listen to us because they were like, okay, I know these guys are going to say, what happened this week in their own type of flavor. And they, they, don't, they won't be scared of anyone or say like PR answers. Mm. They just want to say, fuck this guy, fuck that guy. This was dope. That was whack. And it, it, the, the honesty of it all always felt like people were talking to their friends. It's and you guys like, were uh, hilarious. Scared. Yeah, that, that helped too. <laughs> <laughs> when last did you speak to Larry though? Honestly. Uh, uh, I mean, just in terms of like... <laughs> Last time I actually spoke to Larry, I met him um, uh, at a party about, um, I want to say January, maybe February, February, maybe. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. But I mean, he and I aren't friends anymore. Just. For real. So after that scandal, yeah. you guys broke, broke ties. Yeah, man. It was just, uh, it's a little bit more personal for that for me, which I won't like. Uh, yeah. make again like some sort of, of course. weird story but like it just we had just drifted apart and for me personally i just uh yeah it was just something that wasn't working out so we just walked i walked away from it personally. and then for sure but oh when i'm just we're just not friends anymore but here's the thing right if you guys want an exclusive okay. scare. <laughs> uh-huh. oh, oh. we love exclusives <laughs> <laughs> now here's the thing right Towards the end of Microwave Boys, when we shot that last episode, <clears throat> episode, who did we shoot with? I can't remember now. But we were supposed to shoot an episode with AKA, actually. Mm. Right? And AKA was going to be our final episode of Microwave Boys. And our next move for that was to try to take the show to TV. That was in the works already. Mm. It was in the works, we were, so the AKA, episode if you want to say was going to be the pilot for tv so we're going to shoot it in a different setting we're going to have a whole studio set up and so oh, for youtube we're kind of done because we're like we've reached the ceiling with the show and we don't want to do it here anymore and we all had other priorities and it was just so like we see that we go to tv and we stop the show completely mm-hmm. so the next move was like we're going to take it to tv and unfortunately that deal never materialized because of how things ended up materializing literally uh weeks after we started that movie Wow, man, what, um, uh, were you going in ETV, SABC3, one, Mnet? Nah, well, we're going to try and put it on DSTV. Mm. That was, uh, that's, what we were shoot- that's what we were shooting for, you know what I'm saying? And we, we, we had a prior relationship with uh, some channels on DSTV, and we'd had some shows, and being invited guests on several DSTV shows, and a few seasons, and some other. So we had, that, that working relationship was there. They knew us, just like the whole country knew us. So it wasn't like a conversation that was starting from the bottom, like, who are these guys? It was like, oh, shit, you guys want to talk? Let's talk. So we're just hashing out the technicalities of it and trying to see what kind of deal we could work on. But uh, had things have gone the way that they've gone, Microwave was 100% be on television. 
When I'm hearing you talk, man, it sounds like you have a lot of regrets because, I mean, dude, this isn't, it, it wasn't your fault that microbes had to come into an end. You know, you weren't the one with the scandal, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's unfortunate how things worked out. But uh, for me personally, things had changed for quite some time. And I can say the last, the last year of microwave boys from 2018, from the time we were on radio up until when the show actually ended, which was actually this month last year, in May last year. Um, things had just changed. The energy wasn't the same. Oh, mm. so this had been a long time coming, bro. It had been a long time coming. The, the energy wasn't the same. For me personally, it wasn't the same. I wasn't vibing. I wanted out for quite some time. Yeah, and you know, with what we, we do, of, with what we do, if the energy's on, if you're not vibing with the person, people can tell, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it, it, the small things were starting to affect the bigger picture, you know what I'm saying? And it was just, when you start to feel like something that you used to do so naturally, now you're forcing it. Now it feels like a job. Mm. Now every day I'm like, oh fuck, I gotta go shoot this thing. Mm, <laughs> you you know don't want I mean? that, that, bro. That was my, that was the energy towards the end of it. Like, oh fuck, another fucking episode. <laughs> but Sipo, I want to ask: when the whole scandal came, did you already knew that this was going to happen, or it was it all a surprise for you as well? Well, not everything oh, same day as everybody else on the timeline. Wow, that's crazy. Really? Okay. Hundred percent. I woke up to that. I mean, the, 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 the scandal is not, I mean, it's not like a, a, a word you can't say. The issue here was that was the whole abuse thing with, the, with, 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 with his girlfriend at the time. Yeah. And baby mama. That was the issue. So that we did, I did not know that that had happened. She had not told us. I think she had told some of her friends, but you, like I said, you know how that's the, so like I was in communication with her. Cause she, like, and she had said several times on the timeline that, oh, nobody, like his friends didn't know. And the, and the worst part about it is that people would think that, oh, you're such a close friend. Would you have picked up something? You, yeah. Was, that, was, there never any, was there never a time you saw something was off? Whether you thought, is this person uncomfortable? Or you can feel the energy. That's how much the energy had changed. I can tell you maybe of four scenarios where I'd been in the same room with her. Mm. That's mm. how little. Outside from that seat, for like the last year of the show, outside from when we shot the show, me and Larry never changed. Okay. Oh, man. Do you have any regrets though? Do you regret uh, that happening? I regret not making a stronger decision earlier because uh, I, I personally had had already uh, like I knew things weren't gonna work out for the long term. Mm. And kind of, I held out longer than I should have personally, and that's not mm. to think that I think I'm better than anybody or I think I'm bigger than anybody or I think I'm the shit. Just this is just a personal feeling of how I felt at the time. I was just like. I was done long before I was done. Mm. Okay, okay. And so we were forced to like stop the show and then it seemed like, uh, a lot of people thought we were joking, I guess, at the time because that's how these things go, isn't it? Everyone acts like they're concerned at the beginning and then later on everybody's all happy, 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 clappy again. Then it's like, oh, they were just doing it for Twitter. Yeah, no, I hear you, man. Um, what do you think about all these celebs now having YouTube channels? Like every single day, someone's ah! got a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> <That's a lab>. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> let me tell you something i personally my thing is why did it take everybody so long because mm. right? you can go back again to our show and when it started and at that time it's a lot to create some respect for youtube okay because a lot of the big guys weren't even coming as guests on the show when we started having those celebrity guests the impact grew even more you know what I'm saying? We started having like a Casper and then people are like, Casper's on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And it's not, it's just a regular show with just I don't know, three random dudes or whatever. You know, it's not like an interview with like an MTV base. No, no, no. It's, he's just sitting there on a chair with these guys against the wall, just like I'm sitting right now. Because there was nothing fancy about our show at all. We stayed on a mm. blank ass wall for 80, 81 episodes. <laughs> you know what I mean? We never switched it up. People always say, why don't you guys get a fancy studio? I'm like, people come here for the content. Why don't you give a fuck? We're going to shoot it in my toilet. Yeah. <laughs> That's how hot the show was at some point. After I started in the toilet, people would probably wouldn't even notice that I'm in the toilet. <laughs> you know what I'm Because it, so, it was so content heavy. But um, mm-hmm. seeing the celebs then, I was then I used to talk shit about YouTube, now going, hmm. <laughs> yeah. What is yeah. going on on this YouTube thing? Then they realize that there's money they can make on YouTube. Uh, they can expand their brand. 
uh, on YouTube by uh, by working. I mean, the same way that they work with brand on their Twitter, on their YouTube, on their Instagram, and make money and realize that uh, they're like, oh, if I start a channel and we get X amount of views, um, what should we can actually make money? Oh, we can collaborate with uh, uh, with brands and make so much more money, especially now in these times. <laughs> that we're living in. Now everybody's at home. They can't get out the house. You realize you can make mm-hmm. all these passive income through getting these channels. But personally, I mean, the guys that I'm really, really happy about were actually people that have supported Microwave Boys itself from the beginning, like oh. Janelle and uh, Janelle and uh, and Solo. Janelle and Solo have been showing Microwave Boys love since day one. Every time we saw them, we always we love your show. We watch it every mm. week as a couple. Dope. Pretty ugly and Buntle love them to death. Since day one, showed us nothing but love. Love your show, guys. We watch it as a couple every week. We don't miss the show. You guys yeah. So to see people that always showed us love, who had it in the back of the mind, and those are the two that I can say that I've, I've seen so far. But there's, there's, there's a lot more. Yeah, there's this um, couple that's fucking up the game, man. They get like a million views a day. Jeez. Yeah, I, there's, there's, there's a couple of couples, and I forget their names. Baby, um, what's that couple that gets crazy YouTube numbers? Denzovus, yeah. Denzovus, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, they're rockets. They're rockets. <laughs> <laughs> they rockets. Wow. <laughs> they don't fuck around, that They fucking rocket. <laughs> Abo, and so many people are realizing now, oh, shit, you get to 100,000 subscribers, you get that platinum plaque. You know what I'm saying? It's like a milestone. That uh, girl, Mpumi Ladwaba. Uh, yes, Mpumi. Mpumi just reached 100K, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She's got that nice, wholesome content where she speaks about Christianity and family. And that's yeah. what I like about people realizing you can just be yourself. It's not just come and talk shit or just I have to make a podcast or I have to... It's uh, anything and everything. It's like, no. And people are realize, and I love that about it. I love people's, I really understand what it, oh, whatever I love, I can share with people and then mm. you know, just jump onto it. You know, you, 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 you started this podcast because this is what you do. Yeah. You're a radio guy. You yeah. interview people and you speak on the mic. You're, you're basically, you know, so it was natural for you. And then eventually the success came later, you yeah. know? So that's yeah. what it is. Because well, well, you're being yourself. People tune in here and they you know, it's just Mac G. But some guy pretending to be Mac G. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to talk about something that's close to Ghost Lady's heart, which is marriage. Uh, what did you oh, think yeah. about Lerato Kanyahu and her 50 day marriage? What, what? <laughs> you know, and what? I, was, it out. I was in out. Out. <laughs> 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 It was like a lockdown marriage. Eh? <laughs> hey, my baby. You know, <laughs> and she failed. She failed. It was a level five marriage. <laughs> level five. You know, at this rate, uh, marriages would come in that, you know, you know, like when you buy software, it's got a 30 day trial period. And then if you like the <laughs> software, period. you can buy it. <laughs> That's what we need now for marriages, bro. Nah, nah. No. I have th- longer in my fridge than the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you think well, about I that, Gosling? Sipo, do you want to be married? Do you want to get married? I think I do want to get married one day. Okay. Well, you need someone first. <laughs> I'm going to need, I'm need, I'm need to hold down a relationship for a little while to realize. <laughs> no, regarding the Lorato thing, at first I was kind of pissed off, you know. But anyway, hey, you know. Uh, but I think most importantly, what I've noticed, and actually I wanted to ask you guys, like, with love, do you believe that it's something that, you know, you get like about the whole finding your soulmates do you believe in soulmates or do you believe that love is just an understanding i do believe in soulmates um, i found my soulmate she just pisses me off and annoys me but i love her to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. me with the whole the whole soulmate thing is uh i think somebody had brought it up We're trying to make an analogy but because the soulmate chat is basically saying that there is somebody in this world one person who is meant for you Right, and they exist, and then you guys will, must find each other. <laughs> you and your soulmate must find each other. There's one person that's meant for you. The idea that is crazy because then they're saying, Why is your soulmate if you grew up in Sosha? How is your soulmate also in Sosha? And that's where you met them. <laughs> the idea that the seven, if there's seven people, seven billion people in the world, and you think you have a soulmate, your soulmate could be anywhere, they could be in Ecuador. How are you going to meet them then? They could be. They can't just be in social. 
Yeah. Everyone, everyone's soulmate is within their vicinity. That doesn't make sense. And it's not a soulmate. It's just somebody you fucking met around your, around the <laughs> yeah. of your house. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. That's my soulmate. I, I believe in. Uh, I believe in. Uh, I believe in compatibility. Mm-hmm. I believe there's people out there that you're very compatible with. Um, and because everyone has a criteria of things that they want, so whatever it was, if you want somebody that looks that 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 looks a certain way, has a certain type of job, uh, whatever, does uh, extra things as extracurricular activity, maybe you're an exercise person. I also want somebody who's into fitness life, who reads a lot, and who's got you know, who's close to Jesus. There's millions of people that exist like that. Just yeah. to find the one that you're compatible with. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I feel yeah. like in terms of your goals being aligned, there's not a lot of people in the world that are meant for you, but there's several. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think your soulmate. Your soulmate is wherever you're with at the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> Could be a white night stand, Miana. <laughs> so, so it's about a perfect match, and as close to perfect as you can get the match of the things that you want in a partner, right? Yeah. Certain things you wouldn't put up with. It doesn't matter how somebody looks. It looks important. It's just certain things you wouldn't put up with. If somebody, if let's say, for example, again, if you're let's say you're religious and somebody who's and you're like, you know what? If the person is not religious, I simply can't even give them a chance. For example, yeah. just, I, I couldn't live with somebody who's like, if uh, if I'm religious and I say I, I couldn't be with somebody who's atheist, regardless mm. of how our personalities click or who tick all my other boxes. But if I say I, if if you're just not religious like I am then it's just not going to work for me because that's a very important part. It's a very big part of my life. I don't see us working out. It's just going to eventually tear us apart. So things like that. If you're honest with yourself about the compatibility and focus on those things, then you're going to get a perfect match if you get what you feel like that. But otherwise, the, 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 the soulmate hour. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, no, I'm a big believer in compatibility as well. Like you, you, you hit it right there on the nail about compatibility so the, that's the biggest factor so the thing about uh, lerato sorry i skipped that question oh yeah let me uh, just let me just I brief agree. people that might not know this what happened so barry rue tweeted this this is barry rue uh, it's about mm-hmm. tammy ndlala defrauded a lot of retired from Bumalanga Pretoria and Joburg of the investments claiming to make a lot of money through his forex company for them all these cases are currently at the commercial court and then he goes on to say, Tami Lala is a well-known fraud star. He has two South African IDs. Tami lied to Lerato Khanyahu that he was born in 1981. Kanti was actually born in 1988. And Lerato only saw the ID in yeah, 1981. <laughs> Tami Lala lied that he has a house in Sant in Hyde Park. Kanti is renting. His father, three kids, which Lerato uh, didn't know about and surely found out recently. Tami has also fraudulent court cases he's currently attending. Uh, yeah, so basically he's a fraudster, this guy. Mm-hmm. I, is, is anyone making legitimate money out here? Hey, it's like, <laughs> must, we must question every Maserati and every. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. Right, that's not the only. That's not the only one. So, okay. First thing about this marriage, particularly, that I respect the fact that they didn't stay too long. Yeah, you know I'm saying, like, it, mm. encountered lots of said, ah, ah. <laughs> I'm not going to give this more long, uh, longer than it needs to. I can see only headaches. I'm not going to put up with it. Whatever it is, let's cut it. Because she put out a very amicable statement saying, you know what? And we've decided to split together. Uh, we're going to remain as friends, blah, blah, blah. So nothing controversial about their breakup in terms of how they put it out to the world. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, it's like that Kim Kardashian 72-day marriage. You know what I'm saying? She married that guy yeah. and says, ah, he, I didn't make a bomb. Bomb. That's yeah. number. Fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So you Get see how, first. for example, yeah. if, if you had money, because obviously Chris had money as, as, as the NBA player, he was still like, oh, nope, not enough. This guy is just not the type of guy for me. They ended up very quickly. As hurtful as it is, it's like, ah, she said that nigga a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he was able to move on with his life, she was able to move on with that life, and eventually find the person that she was compatible with, actually. Mm. Just sort of like wasting somebody else's time. So I respect that part of it. But the still of these guys, hey, because this happened to Sarah Langa as well. Her guy is also in court. That was in the private jet. So her ex-husband. Mm. Uh, nah, nah. Because remember when she got married, that guy was in private jet. It was nice. It was Maserati for the whole team. Yeah. <laughs> but my thing is, how do no, you get I... scammed as LKG? Like, don't you do some research and find out who this nigga is? Why he's balling? Google search. LinkedIn. Say <laughs> 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 She probably thought she had done enough. You know, sometimes, man, 
when you when you meet somebody and it's, I don't know, maybe you first fall in love, and then they have all these things as well. You know, imagine this guy if he if he presented himself as a very wealthy person. Mm. It's, uh, it's 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 uh, it's not very easy to like someone's money, especially if you just meet them, right? If you like, if so, if 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 a girl meets a guy who's like flashy and is in private jets or whatever, she just sees a rich guy. Yeah. And gonna, if he says, I'm a businessman, I sell coal, then that's what the fuck he does. He sells coal. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and if later on you find out that coal is actually cocaine, it's like, ah, shit, nigga, I bet you sell coal. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sign up for cocaine. This is a bad deal. <laughs> that's funny. So scammers are very good at hiding where their money is actually from. A lot of people date scammers. They're very good at it, man. They're very good at hiding. Is that why you broke up with your girl? Was she a scammer? <laughs> <She's not. laughs> I would have held her for dear life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me, fine. We can eat the scamming money together. <laughs> that's a grand for a, that's a grand for a breakup with me. That's grand for marriage. <laughs> and oh, the that's compatibility is- for you. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Do you know this Tammy guy? I've never heard of this Tammy guy. Yeah, I've never heard, heard of the guy. guy. I've heard of this guy. And I feel like I, like, I didn't look him up because actually I'm not going to marry him, so I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've never heard of him at all. Just like a baller who came out of nowhere. I guess that's the first red flag. That's the first like, ah, baller, where were you? But do you guys time? think that it's also linked with desperation? Ooh. I can't imagine why that that's a would be desperate. Moral of this story is that she must just stick to the naked DJ once. <laughs> yeah, they'll get back together. It's fine. <laughs> they must get back together. Yeah. Return back to Sandy. <laughs> Make it must yeah, thank the gods. <laughs> sometimes you must just go back home. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, like, <laughs> you, know. you go outside, you devil, you devil. You're like, ah, I don't know all these devils. None of the devil that I know. <laughs> yeah, these devils have new, they have new tricks. I don't want to let these new tricks. <laughs> <laughs> but that one, that one I know is big. I'd love to chat to LKG. I'd want to ask her when did she realize this guy is a scammer? <laughs> <laughs> ah, she'll write a like, book. It's fine. You're like the Oprah podcast now. People open up to you a little bit. Right? <laughs> 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 you have people who sit, you just sit on Oprah's couch and then they just be honest. But tell me what else. They don't, they don't give into it. Now, when they sit with you, they're like, okay, man, let me tell you. Next. <laughs> Yeah. I went I went broke. I went broke seven times. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Oka. Oka, open up. Um I don't know who's uh uh God rest his soul, Chili M. I remember I remember watching the Chili M interview and I was so entertained by him. So entertained by him. He was just opening up like a can of cool beans. <laughs> Oh gosh, <laughs> fuck, man! Another thing I wanted to talk about is, I finally, um, I don't know, but the chillers who've been watching the podcast, I finally got to watch the Michael Jordan, uh, Netflix documentary. Have you seen it, Sipo? Oh. Absolutely, have seen it. I have to go bootlegged yeah. on the eight on the eight episodes drop. <laughs> and what do you think of it? That thing is absolutely, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Now, if you know me, mm-hmm. you know I'm a big fan of. Uh, First of all, basketball, and I'm a huge fan of Michael Jordan. He's like my greatest athlete ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just hearing the news of this, um, the thing coming out, I was just the most excited, like kidly excited to see it. <laughs> um, and obviously, it's been like a very long time. I mean, this, this thing was shot in 1998. Wow. So that last dance, because that's what the last season of the Chicago Bulls when they won the sixth and final championship together. Yeah. So, the team all broke up uh, was when they shot it. So they gave actual access to Shit, like... Shit, man, uh, I was even crying, <laughs> dog. I'm, I crying. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I, I absolutely love it. And I've, I, I'd, I'd always heard the story of um, Michael Jordan being top of his teammates and to see it mm. all like come out. You think it was a bully, out. though? I think he definitely was a bit of a bully, which he admits to himself. Mm. I think he definitely was hard on the guys, which he again admits to himself. Um, Pause. But at the time, it seems like <laughs> 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 at the time it just seemed like 
And the guy was just seems like those guys need to hear that shit. Like, hey, nigga, I win here. So if you go get your shit together, you can fuck off, eh? Yeah. Like yeah. in training, telling niggas like, this is it. This is, what, this is the best you can do. Mm. So oh, usually those type of stories are where you usually dig out. Some people have a different approach to it, but his approach was always like, I guess the only way he knew how to motivate guys was like to be on their ass the entire time and be like, nah, nah, not good enough. And to, it raised their game. Yeah. And you, Costa, did you ever watch it? Them all better play. I do. No, I follow it. I, 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 I love it from the beginning. I've been following it. And I just love the fact at the end of the day, it's just, it just get, brought so much light and understanding on this whole, you know, how, the, how big the guy is, Michael Jordan. So uh, I've really enjoyed, enjoyed it. For me, when I, I watched it, it I think, yeah, you're saying? Yeah. No, go ahead. You're saying? I'll say, that, I'll say what I love about it again is the fact that uh, as a guy, sometimes, you know when you try to explain football to a girl, she just doesn't get it. If, she, if she's not into football, for example. Mm. So whatever it is, you know, usually uh, uh, when it comes to sports, especially football, a lot of girls aren't into it. So it's always you're trying to let her understand this player, this team that you support, the passion, and she just, yeah, it's just a game. You're like, just a game. <laughs> you know, That's the thing as one from a female perspective that I watch it and it's like, you have an understanding why men would be so committed and just love the guy. So, and that's the same for every sport. And I feel like the last dance was done for people who want sports fans who just wonder mm. what's the big deal with this Michael Jordan guy. I mean, his sneakers, like why do they love him so much? He's just a guy who dunks. What's the big deal? And then they see it play by play from the time mm. he was a kid, all the seasons, the drama, what happens behind the scenes, how hard it is, and how the fact that matching up to you know there's so many basketball players and you understand just how great it is above uh he- head and shoulders above everybody else and it kind of paints that picture to like okay i kind of get it if you didn't get it before mm-hmm. yeah for yeah. me when i watched that thing i wished i understood basketball because i'm a soccer guy i don't really know much about basketball but i wish i understood basketball to really appreciate his greatness but just watching it you can just tell this guy is amazing you know and 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 but for me what I found most intriguing was Dennis Rodman. Like every oh, time yes. during the whole document, I'm like, who's that guy? Why is he like that? <laughs> yeah. I was more intrigued about Dennis Rodman because like for me, Michael Jordan was the saint. He did nothing wrong. But Dennis Rodman is out here fucking prostitutes. He's doing cocaine. He's living in the middle of the sea. <laughs> I'm like, I want to know more about that guy. What's he doing? Why is he like that? <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It painted such a, and, and he's been like one of the standouts in this entire documentary. Everyone has taken like enlightenment because if you remember growing up, uh, there was always Dennis Rodman was always like a character, and you see this guy with funny hair, and a lot of people that didn't follow basketball didn't really think much of it. So just this one basketball player who seemed different from everybody else. That's he my thing as well. He had, he had, he just looked different, and you just used to wonder what's this guy's story into. <laughs> I don't know exactly what you're saying. What's this guy? What's he up to? And how is he able to like live such a wild life and then still like perform on that day? Uh, if you watch this episode, then he goes to Vegas and goes wild in Vegas. Wow, my and nigga, the next day, my nigga, he <laughs> he's, he's, he's like me. He comes wearing pajama pants <laughs> to training. <laughs> uh, dude, I found that so interesting that after I watched the I Mike loved Jordan, that episode as well. After I watched the Michael Jordan documentary, I went and tried to find other documentaries about Dennis Rodman. So I got this one, yeah, 30 to 30. So I just need to watch that. But yes, yeah, so I was like, nah, man, I got to find out what this guy's all about. Because remember, from way back, like, I remember when I was still young, I used to always see Dennis Rodman on black tabloids. And you remember way back when there was, you see Carmen Electra, his well, ex-wife or girlfriend. That they Madonna, you was fucking Madonna, bro. <laughs> exactly. Dude. You know, the guy was always on tabloids. And I remember from a young age, like I'd watch this guy like, what's up with this black man? So now when you just saw the whole story, <laughs> I was so intrigued. Yeah, I know. Dennis was def- is definitely the same. I can't wait for the last two episodes. Those have been deep. So 9 and mm. 10 are only coming out next week. I can't wait to see how they're going to close it off. Because no. they've been telling the story so beautifully. And it's yeah. just like immediately become like my favorite sports documentary. And did you see there's a Mike Tyson movie coming out? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I heard Jamie Foxx. But Jamie Foxx has been talking about that movie for like three, four years now. <laughs> I must make it already. <laughs> there's even one interview like three years ago where he's like, and this is how the movie starts. And then he goes into this thing for like three minutes. 
speaking about cameras and zooming in and that's how the movie starts where's the movie dog <laughs> it's like it's like the microwave boys uh, reunion we'll keep waiting <laughs> Yeah, you wait for that one. You yeah. wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. Eventually, you'll be like, ah, maybe I must move on with my life. <laughs> uh, just in closing, man. Another fun fact about that, um, that documentary is that it was actually supposed to come out in July. Because of the whole lockdown and the whole corona thing, Bola Bron James had edged on the, 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 the studio saying, people have nothing to do right now. You guys need to get to work. So they've actually been editing this documentary in real time. Oh, so that's why it's only coming out. That's why it's only coming out two episodes every week, and not like how Netflix really drops ten episodes at the time, because that they they hadn't started editing it before they dropped the first one. They were supposed to. They, they'd still be editing it right now, and it'd only be premiering in July. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they've been editing it in real time and putting it out every week because they're like, yeah. we're gonna get the most traction now because it was gonna stop. It was gonna start at the end of the basketball season, which would almost be over in June. Mm. Oh, all right. So just Get before it. we go, um, what did you guys think about Jeff Bezos becoming? Well, he's gonna become the first trillionaire. I know that guy needs to like, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. His money makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't know, man. It makes me uncomfortable. Hundred and just a billion. It just doesn't make sense, dog. But it's bound to happen. Like, with how her life has turned out right now, it's bound to happen. It doesn't shock me. Man, I'm, much, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm still trying to be a thousand eh? <laughs> Dog, it's just, you have, you have obscene amounts of money. I'll, I'll definitely go crazy because there's nothing you can buy. You have to, like, make the things that you want now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it's so boring. What excites you now? Mm. Like, yeah. Okay, what's the what's the highest check you guys received from uh, YouTube? What's the highest check we received from YouTube? Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I've <laughs> I've made more money <laughs> by myself. <laughs> 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 no, just that check. Whether it's, it's the, okay, as, 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 okay, as, as microwave, a microwave boy, as, as a as a microwave boy's check, the biggest check the microwave boy's entity as a collective received while it was still happening was one for uh, about just over three hundred thousand. If I remember, whoa, yeah. whoa, yes, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Sure, Jeff Bezos. Wow. Yay! <laughs> about, if I remember correctly, it was just it was about it was about that much. Okay. That's, that's as my great boys, that's the biggest. But as biggest, yourself, you've biggest. received more. Yeah, because this I'm, is on YouTube. Uh, my great boys spent a lot of time fucking around. Yeah, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> hey, since I started my YouTube channel, I was done fucking around. Are you into oh, money oh, though? Okay. Like, do you worship money? Worship it, but I mean, I'm trying to make a lot of it so I can live a comfortable life. <laughs> okay. So, how much would you want to? Would you want to be a millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire? Where would you be comfortable with Ike Shop? I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess the the, the, the the most humble I could be is I hope that I can be a billionaire. I guess you know, <laughs> why, why, why would I want to be a thousandaire? <laughs> <laughs> why would I want to have hundreds and thousands? You know, I can have hundreds of <laughs> I don't have a feeling because that means I only want to have one million. (laughs) (laughs) You know, the other day, not enough for the crib I want. Fuck, man. Sipo, really enjoyed this, man. Uh, What do you want to say? Um, Let's talk about your channel. What else are you busy with, man? Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, Writing as usual. I'm working on some new show. Still in my head, most of it, uh, but it's coming out on paper that I'm working on with somebody else. Two new shows, actually. Uh, they don't have uh, anywhere to live quite a bit, but I'm excited about this one particular one that I'm writing with this one very important person. And I'll let you guys know some other time. <laughs> nice. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I think I'm nice. writing a very dope mm-hmm. show there. Um, and also my YouTube channel, which is got a few things that some of them need me to be outside a little bit more. And that's what I hate about this lockdown. It's kind of 
uh, in spring on a few things, especially a few campaigns I was actually working on. But now actually I'm going to be able to do because I think we're going to level three come June. So June is going to be a little bit busy. You should be seeing a lot more stuff from me and okay. the original partnership that I've had. So go subscribe to my channel, uh, Muchi Matters. There's some dope content that's going to be coming out. Other than that, I haven't been in the mood to re- like really shoot for my channel this month. Down. Like I just I prefer to be doing the writing that I've been doing uh, and the shows that I'm working on. The YouTube channel it's just it bored me so much. Like it drained my energy to be honest mm. with you. Mm. Like I just I, I just didn't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just like I'll get to it when I get to it. And then now I look back I'm like oh shit I've dropped like one episode in this <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> now I feel kind of bad, but like it hasn't felt like it to me because it just wasn't wasn't like a focal uh, point for me rather. But yeah. If I get busy, I come June now. I'm going to be able to get back to work a little bit more. Oh, All the man. best, man. Yeah, what do you want to say, Ghost Lady, in closing? What do you want to say to Zipo? No, I'm just saying all the best to Zipo with his channel. Well, I really enjoy it. And yeah, good luck. Thank She's you. lying, by the way. She hasn't even seen a single episode. She's lying. <laughs> no, I do. I do. I oh, what was the last episode? The yeah, what was the last episode? Tell us, Ghost Lady. I don't about this eh? What was the last episode on, on Muchi Matters? What is he talking about? No, it just breaks the whatever that has been happening during the week, right? But I don't see anything. <laughs> he reports on what's happening on Twitter and on social media. Okay, tell us the, the, the studio. What does the studio look like? It's good. It's cool. No, it's, it's good, good. The way he's sitting, the way he is right now, the way he is right now. Oh, okay. Uh, she's yes. seen one. She's seen okay. one. That's how I heard the song. I heard oh. it from you that he was sitting in my head the whole day. I don't think I heard that song on the channel. I'm a friend. So I'm a friend. I'm a friend. I'm a friend. I'm a friend. Sipo, thank you so oh, much, you. man. All the best with everything that you're doing, man. All right, so before we Sipo go... Sipo is a vibe and a half, you know? That's so, what... When Lynn couldn't make it today, I was like, ah, let me hit up Sipo, man, because I know he's always a vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, before no, we leave, a- uh, we've got some announcements to make. Yes, make sure you become a member. We've got some new members, ain't that right, Ghost Lady? There are a lot of members like, guys, thank you so much for just clicking on that join button. And here are the people. Do you want me to read them out? Yes, please. Okay, lately now... We- We've got Shepherd, we've got KDC, Tabiso Prince, Mungezi, Alumbe, and Amkeleil. Oh, wow. <laughs> Luzuko. Ha, okay, and I, I, I need it. This is this is this is your people. <laughs> Don't tell me you can't read this one. <laughs> Which one is it? What does it say? Let me go on the thing. It's boo boo hoo. Boo. Wow. Boo. <laughs> Chivas. I know the surname. I can say the surname Chivas. Okay, and then we've got Mabel, we've got Pomo, and Mojalifa, Kelvin, Tidiso, Katsuchelo, and Gosingi Piling, Tembingosi, Kutso, Katleho, and Dr. Bella, and Pomo Dawung. Become a member and be yes. here on this list. We appreciate you guys. Uh, make sure you check out our website as well. And also, uh, this episode has been brought to you by Artlist. So yeah, uh, do use our link below if you want to join Artlist and get two months uh, free on your subscription. Uh, what else is going mm-hmm. on, Ghost Lady? What else? What else is going on? We're still on lockdown and we're looking forward to level three. Let's cross our fingers. Most importantly, I feel like you guys in your work, you are the you are the numbers that are higher. So if you are st- if you if we have to is how they be still on level four, it's Jobek. Leave Pretoria out of this. We're going yeah. to level three. All right, Ghost Lady, love you long time. Chat to you next week. All right. Coolio, Megchi. Thank you. Love you long time. Boom. Boom. Editing a video? You probably need music. With Artlist, you can find thousands of songs for any video project with one simple license. Get unlimited downloads for only $1.99. With Artlist's unlimited music license, you can save time and money and quickly find the perfect song. Start now and get a free trial. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko.